Hey everybody, Leslie and Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Happy whatever day it is that you're listening to this. <laughs> I feel like, have you ever seen Aladdin? Is it Aladdin? Yes. And the genie's like, um, <laughs> announcing that Aladdin is coming out and he's like, I don't even know what it is. Uh, everybody, everyone's going to be in it. Aladdin. <laughs> I feel like that's what my voice just was right now. Anyway, happy whatever day it is. And today, um, today's podcast is inspired by a conversation that I just had today with an amazing woman. Uh, she's right out of New York, my home state. And if you know who you are, if you're listening to this, sending so much love your way. And um, thank you for sharing because your story, which of course I will keep who you are confidential as I keep everyone that I work with confidential, uh, will be something that I know will be so helpful to so many of our listeners. So did this consultation today and uh, this woman was talking about, first of all, she was the last of five children and she heard a story growing up that her mom only wanted to have four children. So how we come into the world and the stories that were told about what that was like plays a major effect on how we go throughout the rest of our lives. So she grew up with this story of I'm unwanted and I don't belong here. And mom is just tolerating me. Just checking my notes from when I did that today that call today. And so what happens automatically? Well, we're going to become shy. Okay. And that was this woman's issue was that when she's out there in the world, she becomes shy. And not only that kind of has her outward affect being kind of not very nice. Why? Because she needs to keep this protective shield up to prevent herself from feeling rejected or to have other people find out that she's crazy or that something's wrong with her. And what I said to her was like, I don't actually think that really deep down underneath all this, that you're actually shy. And, you know, she pushed back a little. She's like, oh no, we're on the phone right now. You don't know what it actually is like to be with me in person. And so totally get that. But the point being that again, our real personalities, our true selves, who we are without the baggage from the past can be completely different than the way that you've been expressing yourself maybe since you were born. Okay, so that's the one aspect is like what, and this is a question you can ask yourself, what stories were you told about the way that you came into the world or about yourself? Were you the shy girl? Were you the crazy girl? Were you too much? That was what I was. It was like, oh, Leslie, you're too much. Like settle down, right? And so like we, we, we change our way of being so that we aren't abandoned, right? It's a, it's a human thing, right? We all need to be accepted to survive. We all need to stay part of the pack. So if we're too crazy or whatever, then we are going to have to hold that back. And then what I shared with her was how, since I did hold that back, then all of a sudden, so we can't shift the energy. So if you have that much energy that wants to come out of your body, say that you have a lot of energy and you're here and you have this life force that's just like, yes, like I want to talk, I want to be out there. And then we, you create yourself to be smaller somehow, or in certain situations, maybe you create yourself to be smaller and it's not a conscious thing. This is all unconscious that energy still lies within you and you need a, an outlet to release that energy. So when you don't have a safe place to emote, to cry, to yell, to get angry, to feel sad, to, to be excited, to laugh out loud, that energy is going internal and it feels uncomfortable. It feels like uncomfortable. And so all human beings' jobs, we all do this unconsciously, is to avoid pain. And so we get very smart and we realize, hey, when I eat a cookie or sugar, it numbs away this pain. 
And so it's like, oh, well, now I have a lot of pain because I'm getting quieter and quieter as I don't belong here in my family or whatever stories that we're unconsciously saying. And so we eat more to numb, 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 numb. And then instead of our energy going out in an actual self-expressed way from your feeling safe to be yourself, your body starts going out. Your body starts going out because you're putting in this food to numb away that stuff. And then your body starts to get bigger. Okay, not wrong or bad. It's just what happens. And this is why here at Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss, we can't just focus on calories in and calories out and weight loss all the time. Because what we need to understand is that in order for you to have permanent weight loss, in order for this to be a lifetime change, where your weight will not go outside of say a 20 pound range for the rest of your life, right? And I know for some of you, it's like, I do not want to go up even five pounds or like whatever, but we're talking about having the mental sanity at the same time that your body stays healthy and around the same range. Okay. So if you were given an option of like, you can have mental sanity for the rest of your life but your body is going to fluctuate between 20 pounds, or you can have complete mental insanity around food and your weight is going to stay the same, but you will never have mental freedom. What choice would you make? Okay. Now there's no right or wrong choice to make, but for me and for all my clients, the mental insanity is like, cannot do this anymore. One more day like driving myself absolutely insane, miserable, cry myself to sleep at night, concerned about my weight and, and like, why can't I stick to my diet and what's wrong with me? I can't stay consistent. I can't get motivated. I keep sleeping through my alarm. I'm not waking up to exercise, right? That is, and it's just like, you can't do that anymore. And it's like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to stop that madness so that I can have all of the inner peace, all the freedom, everything that I need to show up in the other aspect of my life, right? So step number one, you need to make that choice for yourself. Some people aren't ready yet. I wasn't ready for a while of, you know, like I was still on that super strict food program and I needed that safety blanket of that diet mentality thing for a long time before I was able to actually say, this is insane. I have to stop that because I'm no longer resonating with the fact that I'm a food addict anymore because I'm not a food addict and neither are you, even if you're saying that to yourself, (laughs) it's okay if you're holding on to that belief because it keeps you staying controlled, but it's a bandaid. And it's also, you got to look at the impact of believing that you're an addict. When you believe that you're an addict, you believe that you have no control over yourself and you can't trust yourself, your food decisions or your body. I believed that for three plus years. And I got to tell you, the impact was great. I've talked about it before. Isolation from family and friends. My family was worried about me. My sister and I were just uh, together last weekend. And she said, oh yeah, I knew it was a problem when we were sitting across the table from each other and I took a cherry tomato off your plate and you freaked out. I freaked out. Why? Because I weighed and measured every ounce and like, I would not know how much that one cherry tomato weighed since she just popped it into her mouth. And now I'm going to go berserk for the rest of the day, because what if I was 0.2 off of the amount of vegetables that I was supposed to eat with every meal? Like it was insanity, no sanity. So yeah, know what all that feels like. And, but anyway, finally got to a place where it was like, I had to make a choice. It was so painful. It was so long that I couldn't get back to staying consistently perfect with my diet anymore. And I was at the end of the rope with dieting. So I had that choice to make. Am I gonna like find a way to go back to this or do I free myself from this and actually take on a more empowering way to be? And I got to tell you, life is way better since I made that choice though it felt extremely painful on my way to get here, but to, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how much I love my life. (laughs) Like I can't even tell you, but I would not have been able to grow and expand into the woman I am today. If I still had the shackles of diet mentality around me 
and being terrified of gaining weight and being obsessed about every morsel of food I was putting into my body, I would not have the mental freedom. I wake up every day happy, ready, ready to go. Of course, I have normal thoughts of like, oh, it'd be nice to sleep longer and stuff like that. That's normal. That's always going to happen. But I'm excited about the stuff that's on my calendar every day, right? And it's talking to you about this because I know that you need this. You have to take action out of that place to stay consistent on your goals, to be in a place where you can hang out, have fun, enjoy your life, enjoy your friends and family, go out, not think about what you're eating, not think about what you ate yesterday, not trying to balance all this, not triggered because you stepped on the scale this morning and trying to starve yourself later, not drinking wine at night and then feeling fatigued the next day and then hating yourself for doing that. That's the madness that we're talking about and it doesn't have to happen. I know you've been experiencing that for your entire life and beyond, and it feels like that's just the plague that you had. I thought the same thing. It's not true. It's not true. You can be free from that. And there's the hard work. There's the things that you have to do. Okay. So the last point that I'll make about this woman, she was saying, you know what, Leslie, I'm actually not, I could go without eating. I don't need to eat all day. Like I can go a long time and not eat anything. She, and she was like, as long as I count my steps though, she's like, I'm crazy about my steps. What'd she say? Oh, she said, I'm anal about my steps. I need to have 15,000 steps per day. She's like, my husband wishes that I wouldn't have to do that. So then I looked at that because this is really the mental game, right? It's like, okay, so she's not completely fixated on food. Got it. But she's fixated on these steps. So I was like, how are you? What's your relationship like with control? And she was like, I feel like this is the only thing I can control are my steps. I said, I want you to imagine for a second that you can't walk your steps anymore every day. Silence. And then she's like, oh my God, I think I just had heart palpitations. She's like, I don't even want to think about that. Okay. I'm reading my notes again. She was even having tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, but she was like, I don't care. I'll just get new shoes. She was not okay with it. She's like, this is the only thing I can control. Okay. And you know, she's a caregiver and she's always doing stuff like that. And there's a lot of stuff in her life that she can't control. But the one thing that she could control was was the steps. And what I let her know was, and what I'm letting you know right now is that whatever it is that you are trying to control all the time, right? It's like holding, trying to hold a beach ball underneath the water. Okay. It's like, you can do it for so long, but you can never stretch your arms out. You can never enjoy your life. And eventually you're going to get so fatigued from being in that position for so long. It's going to pop out. Right. And the binge can happen. The eating the potato chips can happen. All of that stuff can happen. Right. And for her, it's like, this is her way of doing that. But at the end of the day, she bursts. Okay. And she explained it as she explodes, she bottles up her emotions and eventually she explodes right? She gets her angry spell out and whatever. But in the meantime, that's all the bottling up and bottling it up and bottling up is when she's eating the potato chips, when she's eating whatever, right? She doesn't care about food a lot of times, but she's mistreating herself and her body the other times when the emotions are bottling up because she has no safe place to express her emotions and she doesn't know how to move past them in a way that's safe, not hurting anybody else, not making anybody else judge you for having emotions, right? These are just habits and patterns that we got from childhood. And it's not your fault that you have them, but there is a much better way of actually being able to express your emotions. And I want that for you if you want that. So healthy hypnosis hour, um, that is happening next Wednesday if you're watching this live. So October 20th, if you'd like a taste of hypnosis, you can message us on Facebook. Um, or ask our team about it. There is a registration page. You can find it on Eventbrite, Eventbrite as well. Um, so you're going to have to do a little digging to find it, but you should find it if you want to come because you'll get a taste of hypnosis. We'll be able to engage. I'll be there live. I can answer any questions that you have about where you're at. Happy to coach you on those days. Um, and then if you're ready to uh, watch our training, you can go ahead and follow the prompts to text the word hypnosis to 72727. And we'll see you again next time. Love you lots. Bye.